Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry I'm late, but you guys know I'm pretty much always late. Uh, today's going to be a really fun day inside of Unity. Sorry, Basically, I'm what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at using uh, a Minecraft-type a method Basically, to actually make our levels okay so we're basically just gonna use building blocks to build out certain parts of our level now we're also going to talk about optimization how exactly do you optimize this scene if it's got a thousands of blocks what do we do to optimize it and also just talk about basically kind of like a if Hollow Knight was a 3d game how would you apply those tiling principles to build out various worlds with the same blocks over and over. It's going to be really, really fun. We're going to jump inside of Unity. Really quick, I did want to let you guys know that if you want to support Father's Development, if you want to support me streaming as often as I can, um, join Full-Time Game Dev with the five coupon codes below. Um, this is, today is the last day or tomorrow, I can't remember. I'll take a look. Today might be the last day that I do this for Full-Time Game Dev. So if you want to join the program, join 3,000 students worldwide, learn everything I've learned in the last decade of making indie games. And by the way, if you're a student, feel free to say hello in the chat and I will say hello to you back. Guys, this supports Father's Development, which is really awesome, but more importantly, it supports you and your future because you're gonna learn a 30 plus hour program about how to make 2D games, 3D games, you're gonna learn how to get funded from publishers, six figures in funding before you even finish your game, which is the way that I like to do things. Um, I've done it multiple times. I've also done Kickstarter multiple times. You're going to learn C Sharp. You're going to learn 2D and 3D. You're going to learn Unity. There's a ton to learn in this course, guys. 3,000 students. There's a private Discord server, some downloadable workbooks for you. Be sure to check out the coupon codes below. These usually sell out during the live streams. And by the way, welcome to the new students. You guys purchased the course yesterday and joined the program, which is really, really awesome. Um, David, Alex, Micah, Sam, I believe you guys were in the stream yesterday. Welcome, welcome, guys. It really means the world to me, and I hope that the chorus helps you out. All right, let's jump inside of Unity and get started. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's talk really quick about a sort of new method uh, that that I'm working on. So this is the interior to the first or maybe the second level of the game. And originally what we had was, well, we had an optimization problem. We had a ton of cubes, right? We have thousands and thousands of little cubes. Now they're, they're rectangles, but they're basically just primitive cubes, right? The problem is it's causing a ton of optimization issues because, well, obviously you've got what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices on a cube. Whereas with a plane or a quad, you would just have four, right? So you really want to reduce those batches as much as you can and the vertices as much as you can. So what I've done here in this scene, and I did this after the live stream yesterday, is these are all just quads. Now we could go even further, right? We could, we could actually make this one massive quad. And so basically what I'm trying to think of is how do me and Felipe build, and Felipe is the 3D artist, uh, for this game. How do we build a system that is also scalable, right? It means we can build a variety of tile-based levels, but at the end of the day, once we finalize the level, it is sturdy, it's strong, it's as many few vertices as possible. And I think the solution, guys, I think the solution might be that once you've built out your level, once you've tested it, and Thomas gives it the stamp of approval, then we go in and start optimizing. So for example, we start laying out, instead of these four by four, these are four units by four units. Instead, you would actually just have a prefab that's a massive quad. And so you just replace all these with those massive quads. Now, the only problem here is that you, you have this sort of issue where you can't really get really specific and create these beautiful floor patterns. Um, there's also Mesh Baker, which we talked about yesterday. 
The problem with mesh baker and baking meshes is that it doesn't actually combine vertices. So at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're getting some optimization, but you're not losing all of those vertices. So I'd love to know in the chat, as we move forward with continuing to set dress this scene, I'd love to know in the chat, what are some ways that you would optimize this scene if it were you? And I'll read that chat <coughs> as we move forward with dressing our scene, okay? All right, let's keep moving forward. Uh, I also did this here, just added some carpet to the upstairs here, and I'll hit play in just a second. We're work I'm re reworking a lot of the interior fo foyer area right here. So it's not perfect, but I'm, I'm reworking it to make it a little bit smaller. I think it was a little bit too big and it was sort of interfering with this massive area over here. When you're doing a level design, you wanna make sure that there's various sizes. Um, and so I think that having a massive, uh, like a meeting hall here makes sense. Having another massive hall over here wasn't really what I wanted. So I made it a little bit smaller um, just before the live stream. So that's why I was a little bit late. Additionally, when it comes to optimization, let me read, let me read your chat and then I'm gonna talk about some optimization. Would, uh, would, would having less box colliders, this is from Robbie. Robbie says, Thomas, if you have less box colliders, it's actually gonna uh, cheapen the physics load on the game. Do you guys think that that is true? I'd love to know. Use texture compression. It's huge on mobile platforms. We have up to 1,000 batches on the Oculus Quest. Wow, but with good texture compression, it works. Do you guys wanna give it a shot? Let's go ahead and try some texture compression. Um, I know that in this scene we have, all we have, this is the great news, all we have is these textures here. Well look, each one is 5.3 megabytes, okay? So let's go ahead and bake, okay? Now before we bake, I wanna make sure I'm moving. There's a lot of optimization I wanna talk to you guys about. This is actually a big deal because if you wanna get on Nintendo Switch, you better optimize. Um, <clears throat> so all of this here, I'm gonna move it inside of the foyer. And this is something Felipe did yesterday. Thank you, Felipe. Um, basically what we're doing is trying to organize our scene a little bit cleaner. And I also learned something here. If I hold Alt and then click, it collapses the scene for you. So I didn't know that. So now it's all clean and lined up. The lever goes into the foyer. Good. Scroll all the way back up. And I don't know where this torch is, but we're gonna put it in there. Okay, but let me, let's test this, this whole texture compression uh, theory, okay? I'm gonna delete the shotgun variant. Mm. And then these tall walls here, we're just gonna put those inside of the foyer as well. And we're gonna talk about why the arena and then the library are disabled, because that's something I did yesterday as well. So let's talk about that, that whole uh, texture compression thought, okay? So currently, if I go ahead and enable everything and then do a big old occlusion bake, an occlusion bake is going to basically find out little cubes in your viewport, and then it's gonna disable the renderers within that viewport. So it's gonna really speed things up. So we wanna make sure we're baking just so we can get a standard uh, frame rate of what we've got. So I hit bake, good, okay? So that's baked and ready to go disable arena and library and i'm going to hit play here and let's take a look at our frame rate now we haven't baked any of the lighting anything like that let's hit uh open up the stats here okay so we're running at a good not terrible i mean in an in actual standalone build it wouldn't be bad at all it'd be something like 100 frames per second but we're looking at 75 right now in this room let's go ahead and open up this room here look i can slide through doors <laughs> All right, so this one's a little bit slower because it's a little bit bigger. So we're looking at 65. And we're every, you know, corner here, we're looking at 2,000 batches, which is ridiculously high. You know, uh, you probably want to use a mesh baker of some kind um, eventually because it'll probably cut it in half. That said, we're not going to bake anything just yet with mesh baker because we're not done with the level. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and select all of our textures and do this little test, okay? Each one is like five megs, right? Which is crazy. 
That's ridiculous, you don't want that. So we're gonna test out this theory of compressing the textures. Now, I love crunch compression. C crunch compression is like a magic bullet. Um, so we're gonna try that. And it doesn't even change the way it looks, right? Um, so we're gonna do that for sure. And then I'm gonna read the chat. Give me just a sec, guys. And by the way, if you're just joining us and you wanna support the channel, be sure to click the link below to join. There's probably four coupon codes left. There's We start with five and they usually sell out by the end of the live stream. If you wanna join, it obviously supports the channel, guys. It really does. It helps us keep making this game. It helps me pay Felipe. It helps me pay myself. Um, and we, we can make games. Um, obviously, you know, I make money from games as well, game sales, but uh, that helps as well. So feel free to check it out if you're interested. All right, the wallpaper, we're gonna do that as well. We're just gonna compress down as many of these building textures as we can. So just selecting everything, we're almost there. It's gonna take a while, so once we get loading, once everything starts compressing, I'll jump into the chat, answer some questions, and also consider some of your other ideas, guys. Okay, almost there. Select all of those, it's starting to slow down here, that's okay. So yeah, it looks like each one is like five megs. Um, really, it should be like 100 kilobytes maybe, I don't know. Um, so let's take a look and see what we can bring it down to, okay? And they're big too, they're like 2046 by 2000, 2048 by 2048, which is ridiculous, you know, you don't need that. Um, so I'm, I would say 1024 and then let's do crunch compression. <sighs> Compressor quality 50 is fine. I, I think that's gonna be just fine. Um, yeah, let's hit apply and while that's going uh, or compressing, I'm gonna answer some questions here in the chat. Um, okay, so what is the optimal FPS in a game? I don't really know. I just know that if you're below 60, you're, you're in problem area, especially for a first-person shooter. Yeah, Slavash is making a good point here. He said that the biggest problem we have here is, is a lot of our, our building blocks have four different materials. It's great because you can build a lot, right? Um, but the problem is, is that you're rendering four different materials on each building block. The solution here is I don't think I want to remove that functionality because it really, it makes it so easy to put together a beautiful level. However, I think what I might do is actually just make sure that we're baking at the end and we're baking everything into a single material. So that's, that's definitely uh, something to consider. Yep, group materials, yep, yep. That's, that's probably what the thing, uh, is optimization a big thing when you're making a boomer shooter? I would say it's even more important because if you're making a boomer shooter, it better run well because it's like a 90s game, right? So you, you want to make sure that you're hitting. I'm, I'm shooting for plus 100 FPS. I, I want it smooth, fast, and snappy, right? All right. Okay. The Dark Boy says, I feel like I have no place here because you are all professional game makers. How many of you consider yourself a professional game developer? Uh, how many of you don't? Give me a give me a hand. Those of you who don't feel like a professional. Yeah, I don't think that's true. Uh, Ahmad says, "Quick tip." I'll try it. He says, "Quick tip: select everything. Uh, selecting one face and then another face will select them all." Yeah, as long as they're lined up properly, right? But if they're all sort of randomly laid out, it's gonna be a little bit different, okay? Uh, but that's a good tip. Okay, so we've compressed our textures. Let's take a look. You can't even tell, right? So let's go and let's look at our uh, new file size. We're looking at 189 kilobytes, which is right where I said it should be. Well, just about. Okay, let's take a look at our frame rates now. Not seeing a huge difference, but actually, I am seeing a little bit of a difference. Looks like our batches are still the same, but we're at plus 60. 
So it looks like it helped um, six or seven frames per second. So round of applause. Who was that, by the way? If it was you, say me in all caps. Do not lie. Say me in all caps. I would love to know who that was, and we'll give you a round of applause. So that was great. Okay, Robin, that was you. All right, Robin, thank you very much. <laughs> Whatever. Or David. Um, but thank you guys uh, for that was a really good tip. And it looks like I think we're getting some seams. No, that, that shouldn't be happening. That's OK. We're going to fix that. OK, any other optimization uh, tips, guys, before we move forward? I'll tell you the one I did yesterday, OK? So if we zoom out. And one of you asked, what's a boomer shooter? A boomer shooter is like a, just a classic Doom-esque or Half-Life game um, or, or Quake. Uh, those are great examples of boomer shooters. So what we had originally yesterday was this. This was all loading at once, which was bananas, absolutely bananas. Um, so what I did is I had Felipe package them up into separate game objects disabled them, and then we have these new things called transition halls. And these are just prefabs that you place wherever you want. And inside is a trigger here and a trigger here. And what those do, and you can specify which game objects they activate, they just activate new rooms and then deactivate rooms behind you, right? And in fact, you never really have more than one room ever active. Um, so this is about the as big as I want to go. Anything bigger, I probably don't want to do, right? Now, another optimization technique that I'm, I'm almost sure of <coughs> is to make all of these quads, okay? There's a problem. If you make a ceiling a quad, the directional light will pass through it. And I don't want the directional light to pass through a quad, okay? So my question to you guys is, how do we ensure that it will block directional light from coming through? Does anybody know what we can do here? I would argue we should probably just get rid of the directional light. You know? I mean, if I got rid of the directional light, I wouldn't have to worry about this. It's not like it's doing much, right? I think we should just get rid of the directional light. What do you guys think? Get rid of the directional light and then just light the scene with point lights and then bake it. Build the model as a whole piece. The problem with building a model as the whole piece is you cannot do occlusion. This is this is what I'm learning. I'm learning right now. You cannot do occlusion culling. Uh, so if it, the whole thing is one massive piece, first it's hard to edit in real time when you're building out your level. It's hard to make gameplay really fun because you're constantly trying to tweak things in Blender, which is difficult um, for me personally. Uh, and also the occlusion culling is an issue. So you really want to. This is what I learned from Jason's story. Jason, if you're in the chat, please let me know if I'm incorrect here. Um, basically, Jason said, we wanna make sure that we're putting together pieces of our map at the end of the day, the final pieces, all the joined pieces need to be like quadrants or like cubes, corner here, corner here, corner here, corner here. That way occlusion culling can cull it out. Check if you if you inside or outside with trigger and enable disable directional light. Hmm. Unity triangulates quads on mesh import. You probably need to activate two sided shadows. Okay, let's take a look here. Let's do one quad here and take a look. So this is a big old problem, isn't it? We've got all these massive cubes, right? It's useless, completely useless. I would argue I'm going to jump. I just want to jump inside of Blender and just make a big old piece. You know, that's the first thing. You guys want to do that really quick? Let's open up platform. Let's actually open up platform quad in Blender. And we're going to multiply this size, scale it by, I would say we could probably get away with 100%. But the problem, actually, like we're going to extrude. We're going to extrude, but we got to make sure we're doing it in units. 
So my question to you guys is, I mean, I'm not an editor, but Felipe's out of town. Um, I'm not a modeler, but Felipe is out of town. But we're gonna do our best here. What I'm thinking is, I wanna be able to extrude this, but I want it to loop. Why doesn't it loop? Hmm. Ah, I think I have an idea. We take this, paste it. Ah, yes, Thomas, there we go. And then we join it all together and we delete the vertices. That's the question. I don't, I don't know, is it welding vertices? But I'm gonna do four by four for now. Oh, I'm using Unity uh, controls. That's why we're getting that <laughs> menu. Okay, so we have all this, right? If I join it up and go to edit mode, uh, I can weld the, the vertices, right? First off, I want to do is clean up. We want to clean, remove unused material slots. No, no, no. How do I, I'm just, I, I can't remember how to do this. Oh, I wish Felipe was here. Clean up. Clean vert vertex, no, 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 no. I want to join vertices. Let's go to edit mode. There we go. Edit mode, mesh, clean up, merge by distance. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to make sure that these are actually connected because they're not, right? So I need to like. How can I select all of these here? Merge. Oh, come on, Thomas, what do we do here? I'm so close. Merge by distance, control J first, okay? That should be good. Um, okay. Ah, uh, yes, I thought I did. Okay, select all, control J, then go to edit mode, then merge by distance. Ah, uh, yes, thanks guys. So let's go to mesh, clean up, merge by distance, Ooh, look at that. So we just keep going. Okay, that's good. Now the question is, how do I get it to loop properly um, but still maintain the texturing? That's the question, right? See, we got a problem there. So now we gotta figure out how do we make it so that um, this is just one quad but it's looping perfectly. Right click on the edges in the center and dissolve edge. Dissolve vertices. <gasps> nope. Top view. Okay, now what? See, this is why I love live streaming because you guys just tell me what to do. Um, let's see here. Whoops. I'm trying to figure out, there should be a uh, project by view. So you're saying merge all of the Yeah, well, you can just do M, uh, collapse, nope, M, yeah, I don't know, guys, scale to four, I, right, 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 you would need to change the UV or the texture, okay, okay, so if I merge these, um, I, I can't remember, guys, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember how to do this, dissolve edges, Okay, call it descents. Grab the edge, but hit G three times. Nope. <laughs> you have to select the inner ones only, and then G. That's interesting, What whatever happened, I'm not so sure, but it looks like you may have done it right. Look. Oh, that was, I'm, I feel like we're close. Hmm. Cause like when I hit G three times, I can do this 
and then I can merge them together. Oh, what is this? Dissolve? Mode, edit mode, menu mesh, auto merge editing. Mesh plus auto merge. Merge. Oh man, what are you talking about? Click delete and then dissolve. Nope. Nope. I know we can, I know, I know that we can obviously unwrap it again. I don't personally want to unwrap it again. Uh, <laughs> you have to choose X edge selection, then dissolve edge, okay? Let's just test this out, okay? Mesh, clean up. Nope. Select all the faces, then press F. Nope. Yeah, but it would, the goal is that it just unwraps for me. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's go ahead and uh, just get it working, okay? So how do we do this? We dissolve the faces. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll do a, a UV unwrap, okay? We will do a UV unwrap. So I believe, how do we just make this one big quad? That's That's the next question. Let's just make it a big quad and then we'll unwrap it. We need it perfectly four by four. That's the goal, okay? Is there a modifier? That would be so cool. F, okay, nope, that didn't do it. We're just gonna make a quad. But the problem is, I, I like everything's, the positioning is all perfect. Um, I believe, let's go back in time. I'm gonna close this, don't save. Open it up again. It's, it's, this is why you have Felipe helping out, because he makes things so much faster. I haven't done 3D modeling in a long time. Okay, so we have this Okay, so it looks like he's got the pivot right at the center, um, which is great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new quad, a new plane, and it looks like this unit size is one. So I'm gonna bring this over here, scale it up, and I believe we can, um, the problem is, is I need to snap things. So do I use control? Ugh, this is great. Thomas, you moron. Okay, yeah, we'll take this, this. So if you hold control, you get snapping, which is exactly what I was worried about, but that works great. Okay, so um, basically, I'm just gonna do this really quick, guys. I'm gonna take what we had, stupid Thomas, and then we're gonna just snap it in place. Hold control, snap it, what are you doing? Oh, I'm so dumb. This is a nightmare. How about I just don't do this? Does that sound like a good idea, guys? Let's apply the scale, apply all transforms. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the scale to four. There we go. I believe we need to rotate it. By, nope, we're good actually, that's good, okay. File save as, this is gonna be platform quad four by four. Actually, it's really not four by four. It's four, eight, yeah, it's 16 by 16. So we're using 
unity units so it's 16 by 16 save so in blender our unit size is four but in unity i believe it'll be 16. all right guys that's the first thing okay so let's just double check let's save that out and take a look and then we'll unwrap it okay so we have our platform variant um, right there that's platform variant and we also have platform variant quad let's go ahead and just replace with prefab and we'll replace this with a platform quad replace there it is there it is okay so you can see that's our quad it's four by four right four unity units by four it doesn't look like it but it actually is four by four so what we're going to want to do here is if i delete these four i'm just checking the size really quick if I delete these four and then bring in a new quad, um, which is, there it is. I'm gonna take this quad, actually, uh, let's go find our quad. It's, gonna, it's called quad 16 by 16, there it is. I'm gonna bring that in here, just put it right here. Hold control, snaps right into place. Okay. We shouldn't be seeing a lip there. So let's see if we can fix that. If I just press V, there we go. Okay, so that looks great. Let's make a prefab out of this. Um, so let's just select where our platforms are and we're gonna drag this platform quad right here. It's gonna be in a, a prefab variant and we're gonna put a box collider on it. Looks like we have that weird thing. I don't know why we have that. Let's delete that. No longer, well actually let's keep it because we need to wrap the materials. But all we're gonna do is just put a box collider on it. Let's make sure the quads themselves, where is it? Doesn't have any children, it doesn't, it does, it doesn't have any children. So uh, eventually it's gonna not have children, that's the goal. Okay, so let's go ahead and unwrap it. Um, I haven't done this in a while, let's see if we can add a new material or select the other material, there it is, good. Um, now, what we're gonna do is go to the UV edit, and we're gonna scale it down. Scale it up by four. Boom, that's all we had to do, okay. Really, was it that easy? I think it was. But we're gonna position it nice and clean at that top corner. And I believe, my friends, that's all we needed to do. Okay, we figured it out. Um, this we don't need anymore. Actually, wrong. I think it needs to be more than that. Is it really more than that? Scale it by eight by eight? Is that really it? I'm confused why we're getting some weird Oh, come on. Sometimes it snaps, sometimes it doesn't. I want you to snap right there. Don't be a baby. Is that it? That can't be it. Why is why why would that be it? That makes no sense. Where'd it go? What? Layout, there it is. Okay, I'm guessing it's gonna be six by six. I don't understand why it would be though. Or maybe it's five by five. I don't know. But we're gonna scale it up by five. Okay, that's definitely not right. Scale it up by six. Man, that's confusing. I don't know why that's happening. It's, I don't know why, it, sh it should be four by four, but it's not. That's what's confusing. Is that right? Let's go to layout mode, take a look. So, uh, uh, oh, I'm so dumb. <laughs> That's why you dummy. Um, okay, <laughs> so it is four by four, it's just it was far away, I'm so stupid. Um, okay, almost there, guys. 
it's just crazy uh, how dumb I am. Um, for those of you who are curious who are just joining us, I'm a 2D developer, so my games are all 2D games. Um, and I'm a coder and a developer and a marketer. So this is why I hired Felipe. But he's out of town, which he deserves. So we're going to scale this, and we're going to do four units, and then just, there we go. Okay, guys, that, that should do it. Um, let's go ahead and delete this. And we have our plane. And that should be good. Uh, I don't really like that it's, yeah. I don't really like that it's gonna be a child or it's gonna have a child, you know? So let's go ahead and select our platform quad here and drag it in. Okay, good. And we're gonna to need to rotate it in Unity. This is another problem with Blender. So we can't see it, right? Because the top, but there it is. Okay. So that's, we can just go to uh, this and just drag it over here and then move it over here. And it should snap right on in place. Ding, there it is. Okay, I don't know what that is, but whatever. Um, that's the actual, yep. I don't know what that is. Huh, okay, we have two for some reason, but okay. All right, so this is the theory, guys. We just place these all over the place <clears throat> instead of having a thousand different tiny little squares, right? And that's how we get the, the ceiling uh, to look good. Um, so that, that should work. Um, the problem is, though, our rotation should be zero, right? Or at least, like if I flip it over like that, this should be zero. So what you do, this is kind of weird. Um, what you do is you rotate along the x-axis by negative 90, apply rotation, then you rotate by 90 and then save it, right? And that should zero out the rotation. So that's 450, if I make it zero, bang. Yes! Okay, so that works great. Um, good, good, good. Everything's working. And can I get a round of applause? I need it. Um, so this is what's great about this. Um, we have these massive quads now, and we can just place them all throughout the scene, right? Um, so I can just select a bunch of them and delete them on our ceiling, okay? So this is another optimization technique that we could be using. And by the way, a lot of you are probably wondering, Thomas is being really haphazard. What's going on? Why isn't he, you know, cleaning up the scene or adding carpet or, you know, getting the enemies done? We really, me and Felipe, really need to know exactly how we're going to be putting these levels together. Um, it's super important. So basically what we're doing right now is big testing phase of like, okay, what are our building blocks? What are our pieces that we're going to be using? Let's see how many tries we can remove just by getting rid of the ceiling. Um, there we go. I believe I can just, yeah, that's the problem with selecting them all like that. Does anybody know how you can like get a line of them though? That's really what I want. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna figure out how to get a line of them. Like I, I would love a, a selection tool that was like a paintbrush. Then you could just shh. Like I don't know why Unity doesn't do that. Yeah, 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 we're gonna rotate it. We're gonna rotate it. Correct. We can even do a big piece. You guys wanna do a big piece? Hmm? We can do multiply it times two. So we could do this, we could go boom, scale by two, right? We go to the UV edit, boom, scale by two. And that's that, file save as. And this is gonna be 32 by 32. A big old square. You know, maybe we want that, I don't know. So it's good to have. Um, yeah, we could definitely get away with using those. So let's take this one here. That one's all set up. Uh, we also have the 
32 by 32, which it should be somewhere. Where is it? Did it not save? Platform quad, 32 by 32, somewhere else. There it is, I don't know why, whatever. Okay, so there it is. <clears throat> so this guy is huge, right? Saving a ton of memory here just by throwing in this massive quad. You know, there's a lot of times where you want, you actually do want to use building blocks like walls and corners and stairwells and you really want some intricacy. But a big flat ceiling, it makes no sense to use a ton of blocks, right? No sense at all. So that's why we're doing uh, this really quick, guys. Super duper important. Um, so this one we can just drag over and it's gonna be 32 by 32. Uh, prefab variant. Why are we doing prefab variants? Because we want it to be linked to the blend file. And if you break that linkage, it's not going to remember the blend file very well, right? That's that's why, okay? Um, obviously, the material is off. Um, so what we want to do is we want to take this material, the ornamental ceiling, and then just drag it onto there and then hit apply. Um, that's our platform. Now, we're going to rotate it, but we don't want to worry about that right now. Um, I mean, honestly, we could probably just do the floor. Let's actually just use the floor material. Um, so if we go to material stone tile, drag it on there. Look at that, seamless. Oh, what a breath of fresh air. We're gonna remove half the tries or uh, whatever you call them. I don't know the words, batches. <coughs> no, well, you could do the scale 16 by 16, but that would require you to what? change the tiling of the material. We're trying to use, so you'd have two materials. You'd have one that's tiled twice as much and one that's just regular, right? The problem with that is that you have to have all these multiple materials, right? You gotta make sure they all match. Our goal is to be able to have one material for the floor and you drag it on there and it works like magic. That's the goal. So we're, we're, we're really thinking about scalability, scalability, scalability. That's the end goal, okay? I'm gonna hit apply on this one. And then this one as well. That's a big boy, look at that. Now we could do a long one, right? We could go, okay, well, let's do, let's do 32 by 64. So we could scale in the Z axis by two. Whoopsie. We could go to edit, uh, modeling, <coughs> where's our, our plane? Hold on. Might as well, guys, now that we have it open. I can't find it. What the F? Hold on. There it is. Pfft, whatever. Uh, so watch this. Let's do one that's super wide, okay? Um, scale in the Z axis by two. Why? Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 we wanna do it this way. Okay, scale in the, no, no, no. This needs to be one. Crap. Let's take a look at the scales. Eight by eight by two. That should be four by four by one. Eight by eight by one, okay. So I don't know what that means, but the z-axis in unity, that's so weird. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm fine with the, the quads we have. I'm gonna have Felipe take a look at that because I don't wanna screw up his math system. Um, so we're getting some weird, weird stuff inside of Blender that I don't really fully understand when it comes to unit sizes. Okay, um, so that's great. That is good, that is that is good as well. Okay, so guys, let's just go ahead and delete um, just the interior pieces. We're gonna keep the edges, okay? And we're gonna see how many we can use, how many of those quads we can use. See, how, see why this would cause a huge performance problem? This is crazy. This is really, 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 uh, redundant and pointless, okay? So this is this is just a learning curve for me and Felipe. Um, we're just slowly learning 
how to build out this game. Okay, so we got our little quad here. We can delete that little friend. We don't need him. Why, 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 why? Why can't I select you? Ah, uh, yes, there, no. Okay, let's use our little trick here. Alt, click, drop down. This guy here, I don't know who he is. I have no idea who he is. Let's go. Let's type quad here and see what we find. There he is. I can't select him though. Is that him? He's locked. That's crazy. I have no idea who he is. But that's okay, I guess. All right, so let's just, I think that's good. This is just our little test case, so let's go ahead and try it out. Let's throw in those new quads, right? Uh, 32 by 32 variant, big old guy here. And remember guys, hold control, and then you can snap those. It'll snap within the context of the grid, right? But we can also hold V and just pull it over right to there and it snaps perfectly, see? Awesome. So it looks like, guys, we can get away with just doing two big old ones right here. Look at that. That's great. And just hold V, snap. Whoopsie. Hold V, snap. And we'll just rotate them to face down, right? Um, but before we do that, we need to make all of these exterior ones quads. So this is going to save a ton of uh, a ton of performance. I don't see why it wouldn't. But let's pull those guys over here. Make sure that's snapping properly. Looks good to me. And now we have a new ceiling, and it's just these quads. I'm seeing some flickering. I wonder why. Why am I seeing flickering? Oh, it's it's the chimney. Okay, we're fine. Uh, these need to flip. Right, so now when we're underneath, it looks identical, right? Absolutely identical. And changing out the material is not as much of a pain, right? So if I wanted to change it out to this ornamental ceiling, bang, bang, we are done, right? I don't know what's going on here. Ah, yes, okay, so those are all um, box colliders. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, these, these do need to be quads. I don't wanna bore you guys with that. I think we can go uh, just go ahead and test. Um, let's let's make sure we bake the occlusion. So now we can bake it all. The problem is, you know, we can't really occlude out that ceiling if we're kind of looking away from it. But the, but it's only eight vertices, right? So I don't know why that would be a problem. So let's just make sure this. I'm not expecting to see much of a frame drop, but it's mainly the principle of it. Well, when I look up, I'm only looking at 353 batches, which is pretty awesome. That's good, because originally it was gonna be pretty high. Um, so this is great. That really, really saved a lot of time. So if we do that, if we apply that principle, guys, to everything, like this right here, it's like, well, this, this should probably be a 16 by 16, right? Um, it's gonna change everything. The whole game is gonna speed up. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, maybe build out the level first, make it really fun, like you're playing Minecraft, and then when you're done with the level, once there's a stamp of approval, you have an optimization team member come in and swap out quads um, that, that you can do in batch, right? Um, so that looks great. Let's go ahead and start doing some, um, let's go ahead and start doing some more some more uh, decoration, okay? I have a, a hallway here. It's not the best hallway in the world. It's not great, but I wanna make it look a little bit prettier, okay? So I'm gonna do a wallpapered hallway with carpet. Um, then there's gonna be maybe some wood panels there that block the hallway, and then it goes down into the chute where you get a key, okay? And by the way, guys, those of you just joining us, just remember that full-time game dev is 50% off. There's probably two coupon codes left. Guys, this supports the, honestly, it's getting pretty expensive. It supports the, ch the channel and father's development. So because of you guys, because of the students who join my programs, um, we're able to fund father. 
self-fund father, at least currently, right? We're talking to a few publishers. Um, but more importantly, it is an investment for your future. And I can prove it by saying, are there any students in the chat? <laughs> and I know you guys like to show up and uh, tell people your honest opinion. Honestly, I wanna hear your honest opinion about the program. Okay, uh, so that's gonna be, let's start with this sort of wall here. I think that what I wanna do is just make this a stone wall. Any interior rooms are gonna be um, like wallpaper or wood paneling, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this brick wall to edge here. And I'm just gonna bring it like this, okay? So now we have this beautiful bottom frame here that's being added, okay? These are messed up, so we're just gonna add brick wall here and then brick wall here, okay? All right, let's bring in a door. Now when you're creating a any game really, you wanna make sure you have your prefabs ready to go, um, that there's no confusion. Where is my door, tall door? Let's find it. So confusion like this, right? We have a lot of old assets that we need to clean up and delete. But you wanna make sure that creating a door system, for example, is super snappy and super fast, right? So if I wanted this to be an iron gate, I could go, well, is it wooden? And I could just deselect it and it's gonna automatically become an iron gate, which I think is what I wanna do, okay? So we're gonna do an iron gate instead. So it's not gonna, right now it doesn't look like an iron gate, but it's gonna be an iron gate. <clears throat> and I don't think I wanna do wallpaper actually. This feels like it's gonna be a dungeon, like a weird hallway that you're not supposed to go in, okay? Maybe with some wood floors, you know? Um, so let's try that out. <coughs> Excuse me. This carpet here, for one, I know for certain I want it to have an edge, okay? So we're gonna add an edge to this carpet so that when it transitions to that wood, uh, there's more of a, it's, it's, it looks intentional, right? So we're gonna add an edge to the wood, uh, to the, there it is, yep, yep. Add an edge here and an edge here. It looks like it's already being added in the right direction. Okay, this one not so much. Where are you? Ah! There he is. Okay, so now we have an edge that takes us into our little hallway here. Let's do wood floors, okay? So we're gonna scroll down, find our wood floors. Just drag them in, look at that. There we go, oops, wrong one. Here we go, wood floor, wood floor. So this is gonna look more like a storage closet slash hallway, right? That you're just not supposed to be in. This one down here, let's add, let's keep it stone, right? A nice transition. Um, but we're gonna do a two edges on the stone to really create some of that framing. We could even do one with three edges and then rotate it. Look at that. And then this one over here, it's, ugh, it's not the best way of laying things out. It's my fault because it kind of goes through the wall, but uh, that looks fine to me, okay? All right, um, this looks great. We've got wood floors going down to stone floors. We could make this wooden walls on the side with these sort of wood panels here. So that's cool, I guess. Can we do two of them? Yeah, that's great. I really like that. So it looks kind of like, um, it looks like a place you shouldn't be. You know what I mean? We could even do a stone ceiling. Two edges, two edges, two edges, two edges. Same down here, two edges, two edges, two edges, and two edges. Okay, that looks great. Very intentional. Two edges, two edges, two edges, two edges. And we'll do it right here if we can. Two edges, yeah, it's not gonna do it. Well, that's because the, the frame is blocking it. I wonder if we could make the frame wooden. Let's try it out. Eh, it's not the best. Maybe wood paneling. Eh, it's not the best, wood paneling. Nah, not the best. Wood planks actually works. No, it doesn't. Well, what on earth? I, 
believe it's the inside edge or something that no what about four edges no that's fine whatever keeping it stone is fine okay so that looks great the ceiling looks a little too ornate for a closet like this but also these pillars here i feel like they should be wooden okay so we're gonna go to our prefab swapper okay and this is from jason wyman replace with prefab and we're gonna go to our wooden pillar and replace it so now we have well it didn't work why didn't it work it should work let's try these replace with prefab we're gonna replace it with pillar wood okay that worked let's just do the other side for some reason the other side didn't work replace with prefab so this is just uh I feel like this is a really seamless process. Um, I could be wrong here, but I feel like it is. And the reason it is is because we've been really thoughtful with how we're putting together the levels and looking at the sizes and the unit size, the world sizes. We're not just randomly throwing stuff into the scene. It's every, everything snapping into place. Okay. All right, so that looks great. One final thing is just a ceiling, right? I feel like the ceiling should just be the two edge. What do you guys think? Sort of a stone ceiling. Nah, I don't like it. What about the, uh, the flooring? What if we do a floor like a ceiling that looks like that? You know, we could do that. Let's select it. And it's gonna be a, a, a three edge right here. Okay, that might work. Yeah. We could do a two edge here. Two edge. Right here. Oh, everything's inverted. Uh, this would be a corner with an inside corner. There we go. And then over here, same sort of thing. Two edge. <clears throat> and then this would be a three edge. Rotate it. This is kind of ugly right here, but that's par for the course with Thomas. I'm not as precise as Felipe. I'm gonna talk to him about how to make this look a little bit more precise. Um, four edges, that's good. Honestly, it's not the best because you can see it sticking out. Whatever, I'll talk to Felipe about it. I'm trying to figure out how to fix it. Um, and then this down here is gonna be the same sort of thing. I actually think it looks kind of cool with an ornamented ceiling Problem is we don't have four edges, right? Um, I think it's okay though. I'm not gonna worry about that one. This right here, I wonder if I can set it to be double edge at the top. Look at that. So now we have a lot more, uh, yeah. And this is why we've got multiple materials on multiple faces so that we can really start adding in detailing like this, see? So that, that looked weird, right? But when you can throw it in and do that and then later do a mesh bake, and combine all the materials, um, it'll look good and perform good. That's the theory. We're gonna do a big test after we finish the level. Um, I'm hopeful, I'm very hopeful. Okay guys, that looks really good actually. Uh, what if we could do two edges here? Two edge, two edge. This probably needs to be two edge as well, yeah. And then one down here as well. Almost done with this little closet area. That looks like it needs to be a wooden edge here. I wonder if I can do that. Um, some sort of, let's see here. Ugh, that sucks. It's fine, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No worries. We can actually probably just move the gate. No, I like having it in the stone. It's good. Uh, Unfortunately, we can't really frame it because I don't have all the framing pieces. Um, I don't want to make them either right now, so I'm not going to worry about that. There's only so much you can do in the time you have. Do you guys want to go walk through that new corridor? Let's take a look. Okay, so that's 
the first key. We can sort of see it hanging out there, right? Can't get there. <laughs> um, so up there is our new... Probably gonna see some occlusion culling issues. Maybe not. Need to add a wall there. It's locked. Darn. Let's see if we can pause, uh, unlock it manually here. But did you see how it, it's now a iron door and it just did it by default, right? So it's not locked. There's no key. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna matter. Oh, there we go, okay. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Good, it looks like a storage closet. Very spooky. Takes us down here, let's grab the key, flip the switch, and now we're back at the beginning. So just classic game design, right? All right, good. So we're gonna need to do some occlusion calling for sure. Okay, that's all decorated, right? And all we're doing right now is decorating with materials. That's really all we're doing. Um, so that's kind of how we're, we're doing things. What we accomplished is, first and foremost, we got this quad, right? Big old quads, which just speed things up. Um, we can implement that practice pretty much across the board with everything. Um, and then what we also got done is we added some um, really great looking materials to this hallway. So I'm really happy. Um, let's go ahead and make sure this isn't locked and set no key. All right, that's great. Okay. Well guys, just remember that full-time game dev is 50% off. I appreciate you guys letting me do sponsored ad reads. This is my course, which sponsors the live stream. It really means a lot to me because guys, all of my students, every student that leaves a review, every student that leaves, um, a good review or a bad review is supporting father's development and more importantly is supporting their future. I will admit, I don't think I get that many bad reviews. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen any. Um, so we, we, we're really happy with the course. We're really proud of it because it's 30 hours of content. Um, you're going to learn 2 dr and 3 dr learn how to secure funding from publishers, learn how to hit the steam front page, um, learn C sharp, learn unity. Um, and by the way, if you are a student, um, you can let us know in the chat. That always means a lot to me. Um, it means a lot that you guys show up. But there is probably two codes left. Um, usually these sell out pretty fast. So there's only five available today. Uh, tomorrow, if we do a live stream, I will shout you out in the live stream. And thank you. And again, thank you, David, Alex, Micah, Sam, and Corey for supporting the channel and joining Full-Time Game Dev. I hope the course really, really helps you out. Um, it means a lot. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. Hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.